Let's get to the cool stuff and add a custom advanced item to Minecraft. Minecraft modding courses with close to 100 topics ranging from custom tools and armor to custom block entities all the way to custom mobs linked in the description below. All right, we found ourselves back and tell you once more and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom advanced item to our mod right here. And what I mean by an advanced item, that is an item that has its own item class, allowing us to do oh, all sorts of crazy things. Let me tell you. And for this, in the item package, we're going to right click new uh, package and we're going to call this the custom. This is done for organizational purposes only, so you don't necessarily have to do this. Inside of this, though, we'll make a new Java class. I'm going to call this the metal detector item. Now, it is convention to end the name of custom items with item over here. Highly recommended to always do this so you know that this is an item class. And this will extend the item class right here from NetMicroft item. We'll hover over this and create constructor matching super. And with this, a custom item class is born. However, it has literally zero custom functionality. And that's what we're here for. To take a look at what kind of functionality you can add to this, you can middle mouse button click on the item class and you can take a look at all of the crazy methods that are available here. And there are a lot of things as you can clearly see. Now for us, what's interesting here is going to be the use on block method right here. This one called when an item is used on a block. Something else that might be interesting is the use method, as you can see. This one is basically called when the player uses the item. So that just means that you're not looking at a block and you're just right-clicking this item. And the way to use them is to go into your custom item class and to overwrite those methods. So, for example, the use on block method. Here's another example, the use on entity method, which, of course, logically would be called when you right-click with this particular item on an entity. Entity in this case refers to any type of mob, basically. But in our case, we want to use the use on block method and we want to return the action result dot success over here. So we also get this like this swinging animation when we actually right click on the block. And what is our metal detector item going to do? Well, what we're going to do is when you right click a block, it's going to double check all of the blocks that are below that block. And as soon as it finds a valuable block, whatever we are, whatever we're defining that to be. So, for example, an iron ore block or a diamond ore block then it's going to output that we found that block with the particular coordinates. To start, we want to first of all say if context.getWorld.isClient and then there we go, making a new statement. And now here, very important, we want to add an exclamation mark here at the front, meaning that we're now on the server and not the client. This exclamation mark does a lot of heavy lifting because it negates the isClient over here, basically making it so that we're only inside of this if statement if we're on the server. And then we want to get some variables. So the first one is the block pass. That's just going to be the position clicked over here. And that's going to be equal to context.get block pass. We then want to say player entity. And that's going to be the player getting this from context.get player. We also want a Boolean variable that's going to be called the found block. That's going to be equal to false here in this case. And then we want to go through a for loop. Now this for loop looks like this. Basically, we're going to start with zero. We're going to start at the position that we've just clicked. We're going to go through all the way until zero, basically. So we're sort of subtracting from the Y level that we have until we reach zero. And then we're going to continue for 64 more blocks because, of course, we now have the lowest Y level is now minus 64. Then we're going to get a block state. That is the block state that we're, well, basically sort of currently evaluating. That is going to be done with being, with doing context.getWorld.getBlockState and then passing in the position clicked, that down, going down by i, basically as we're going through this for loop, right, i is going to increase, so we're going to go down one block at a time, and, and then evaluating that. How are we evaluating that? We're going to say if is valuable block, and then passing in the state right here, then we want to do something. Now the first thing is, wait, is valuable block doesn't even exist? Exactly, that is a custom method that we have to create ourselves. So we're going to hover over this and create that method inside of our item class. And we want to return something, and that is a Boolean. So let's just say we want to check that the state is of... I want to say this is of the iron underscore or. Or we can also say this is state dot is of blocks dot diamond or. There you go. So if we right click on a block and any block below that is an iron or block or a diamond or block, then the is valuable block method is true. Therefore, we will now be inside of this if statement and we can then output valuable coordinates. And what we need for this? Well, we need the coordinates to output. So that would be position clicked dot down and then passing in the i here in the down. 
We want to output this for the player, so we should pass in the player. And we also want to pass in the state. But you know what? We can actually do the get block over here because we want to basically also say, hey, this is the block that was basically found in this position. We will also do found block is equal to true. And then we will also break out of the for loop because once we found one valuable, I actually want to be done with this. There we go. And we can now create the output valuable coordinates method as well. We're just going to change the name of this to block pause. That's a little bit nicer. And I'm going to copy over the contents of this, but they are pretty straightforward. You can see we're just sending a message to the player. That just means that we're outputting something into the chat, basically. And we're going to do this as a literal text over here. We're just going to say found. And then this is going to well show you the name of the block that we found at the position X, Y, Z, just written nicely. And then the overlay false just means that it's not shown sort of in the middle, but actually as a normal chat message. And then the question is, well, if we are done over here with the for loop and we have not found a block, well, we of course also want to do something and we want to output something else. And that is going to be player.send message. And what we can do is we can just say text.literal and we're just going to say no valuables found. Awesome. And the last thing we want to do is we also want to hurt this particular item. So that basically means that we're going to damage this. It's going to have a durability of, I mean, whatever we choose. And it's going to take away one of those durabilities when we right click. So we're going to say context.getStack.damage. We're going to damage it by the amount of one. We're going to say context.getPlayer. And then we start typing in player and you can see it's, it suggests us the consumer of player entity. We just hit tab to autocomplete. I'm going to say player entity dot send tool break status and then passing in player entity dot get active hand. And then we'll make sure that the item inside of our hand is also damaged and will break accordingly once the max damage amount is basically reached. However, right now, this particular metal detector class is not used and you can see this because this is gray and this is gray. So the name of the class is gray as well as the constructor. So let's go into the mod items class and let's actually register this. So for this, I will just duplicate the raw Ruby over here and I'm going to make a metal underscore detector. And of course, not forgetting to change the name metal detector. And you might be like, oh, then we're already through. But no, wait a second. Look at this again. This is not being used because what we need to do in the mod items class this is extremely important. Under the new item, we now want to create a new metal detector item right here. And you can confirm that you've used this when the class name turns white and the constructor name turns yellow. You can also middle mouse button click on the constructor and it should take you to the mod items class again. Absolutely spectacular. I'm just going to make another break line over here that it's a little bit easier to read. And then under the fabric item settings, we're also going to add the max damage right here. And that's going to be, let's say something like 64. So with this metal detector item, we can click 64 times and then it's going to be destroyed as every right click, we're going to damage it by one. Now, as for all of the other items, well, of course, we still need to add it to the item group. That is going to be very straightforward. Just duplicating the entries that add over here and then making this the metal detector. Similarly, adding the translation should at this point be no issue at all anymore. Same with the item model JSON file. And let's copy over the texture over here as well. This is, of course, going to be available to you for download. But those are all the steps that we need for the custom advanced item here, the metal detector. So let's jump into the game and see it working. All right, found us back in Minecraft and let's just try and find some valuables. So you can see we find, oh, there we go. I actually already found some iron ore over here. There we go. That is at minus 128, 33 and minus 13. And we can, of course, continue to, well, basically try to find something. Diamond ore might be a little bit harder to get because, well, I mean, that's just, it's going to be a rarer, right? So obviously it's going to be not showing up as often. And if we just continue to right click with this particular item, and at some point, you can see the durability is going down and it's going down and it's going down until, well, the inevitable happens, the item breaks. So that is a custom advanced item. Right, as always, of course, the code is going to be available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time, we'll continue with an advanced block right here. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.